Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad-free over at Patreon.com slash Inspired Disorder. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality. Nobody! It's a movie out now on VOD. It was a movie that uh, got released during the pandemic. Uh, I saw a lot of people going to see it at drive-ins. And it's a movie that I was looking forward to watching. It's uh, starring Bob Odenkirk, directed by the same guy that did uh, Hardcore Henry. It's a very interesting action film, first-person action film with parkour. Great action. Very inventive. Very inventive action scenes uh, by Ilya uh, Nashuler, who's a, a Russian, Russian-born director, uh, which I didn't f- realize that he did Hardcore Henry until just now uh prepping for this this episode uh which it, it feels different than hardcore henry in a lot of way i mean in every way hardcore henry is very stylized and very specific to that that kind of wide angle first person view uh this one has uh, a lot of feelings that are similar a lot of a lot of aspects to it that are similar to john wick uh, i mean you have an older action star guy Uh, This time being Bob Odenkirk, which is not somebody that you would think to be an action star, Uh, you know, from Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul, uh, stand up comedian, improv comedian, sketch comedian, uh, who is a badass, who is a badass. And I didn't really know what the story was uh, going into this. I just knew that Bob Odenkirk is going to be fighting people. I didn't know. And he's and it's called Nobody. Uh, I didn't know anything else about it. So getting into it, there's like this daily montage thing that happens in the beginning that's really just hammering in. The audio every time the day shows up hammers it in, but also just hammers in the mundane life that he leads. You know, he's got the the wife at home. He's got the uh, he's got two kids, you know, older son, younger daughter. He goes to a boring job where he's the accountant uh, at some like industrial whatever. I don't know the fact. I don't know what they're doing in that place. Actually, I really don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> but it's like a family-run business. His wife's family. Her, I think it was her father and then her brother work there, and he's the accountant. And it's just like this boring life. But Odin Kirk is jacked. Like that, you see him. In this montage, you're seeing him at the bus stop doing pull-ups. It's like, okay, like this is a guy that's got, you know, he's a fit guy. Like, which is very, doesn't really fit with the fact that he's an accountant. But you find all that stuff out later. So there's this event that happens, right? So you don't really know. He's just like this regular guy, right? Regular nobody guy, just average Joe. Uh, and this event happens where there's a home invasion, and during the home invasion, uh, they steal uh, his daughter's uh, kitty cat bracelet, or at least he thinks that's you know it's it's gone missing. He thinks it was the home invaders. Uh, and during the home invasion, there's a scene where Bob Odenkirk's character, whose name is uh, Hutch, oh this one has the first and last name. Uh, reviewed pig the other day and uh they didn't have the first and last names of the characters uh but this one they do hutch mansell okay uh hutch is his name and uh bob odenkirk's name and uh it's a situation where uh bob had was like uh somebody was fighting like his kid came out and like wrestled down one of the the home invader people Bob Odenkirk uh, had a golf club and was ready to hit the woman, the female. There's two people, male, male and a female. The female had the gun, and Bob was going to, he was in the position to hit her with this golf club, but doesn't. And all of these events, like the home invasion, what he does, his son just having, like, no respect for his dad because he, he chickened out on doing anything to like protect the family or whatever. Not that anything happened to the family. They just came in. They were trying to get money. Um, but it's like showing that like this Bob Odenkirk guy, this Hutch guy, is just like it, it, everything's pointing to like, oh, he's just a normal nobody guy. 
And then something happens, and he's like, like it's just so much disrespect, so much disrespect. Uh, he goes to work, and his son is talked to his uncle, who he works with, and his uncle's like this, you know, kid, probably Kid Rock fan, got the mullet, and you know, packing heat, and he's like former military or whatever, and he's he he thinks that in the dynamic of the relationship between Hutch and this guy is that he's the alpha, that Hutch is a beta. Everybody thinks that Hutch is a beta. And, uh, you know, there's the thing. And then he gets tired of it. Hutch gets tired of, of, like, everybody thinking he's a beta because he knows who he is. And we don't know who he is as, as an audience. Of course, spoilers. Of course, spoilers. But you find out he's going to get this kitty cat bracelet back. Right, goes unsuccessfully does, but on the way home, he needs some like he needs blood. Like he went out to go get revenge and get this this bracelet back for his daughter. Was unsuccessful because you know they're poor people and they were just trying to get money. And he doesn't believe that they have the thing. And it's like okay, well, I'm just gonna I'm cutting them loose. But he's taking this bus ride home. And these group, this group of assholes get on the bus, and they're, they're being extremely inappropriate to a female passenger on the bus, a younger girl. And these older dudes are just being, you know, the, the very rapey. Put it that way, very rapey. And Bob Odenkirk's like licking his lips going, oh, here we go. This is, I'm going to get out what I couldn't get out with those people. I'm going, to, I'm going to release the demons, as it were. Uh, and it's amazing fight scene ensues in this bus. It has, like, a real feeling of, like, John Wick in a lot of ways. Like, that kind of raw, grounded kind of action. Like, where people get hit and get hurt and things are happening. But, I mean, obviously, they have a little bit more strength than they should. And they get, get up from punches and things that, that would have knocked most people out. But, uh... A really raw, fun, like, interesting, unique fighting styles. Grimy, gritty. Bob Odenkirk, clearly a good fighter, but still taking punches. He doesn't have the greatest defense, let's, let's put it that way. But he's also taking on, like, five or six guys inside of a bus. But it's like that bus scene really sets a tone and really shows the audience that the thought process everybody had of, of Hutch being some beta completely out the window. Completely out the window. And as this movie goes, you see that more and more, he is the complete opposite. He is the alpha of alphas. He is the guy that government organizations call upon to take care of business they're not able to do called the auditor is like his his like his uh, uh distinction his his job title in his old life um and as the movie goes there's a lot of great action scenes a lot of inventive action scenes you see that he was this elite guy who fantasized about having the normal life having the wife, having the kids, doing the normal job. He romanticized that mundane lifestyle of normal suburban living. And he hates it. He hates it. He misses the destruction. He misses the violence. And uh, this movie shows, puts that, that kind of joy of violence that he has, that he's been bottling up. It really puts that on display. And, uh, yeah, just even that the, the end of the bus fight, like there's little things like in this bus fight, like the very end of the bus fight, like he breaks somebody's nose and like the guy's not able to breathe. So he gives him like a tracheotomy to keep him alive. Like you can tell that this guy is like leaps and bounds, leaps and bat. Like it's, it's similar in a lot of ways to John Wick when it's like, oh, when they, when the audience realizes like, Oh, they fucked with the wrong guy. They fucked with the wrong guy. But what happened was one of the people in the bus that he beats up is connected to a mob boss, and then there's 
then there's the friction between the mob boss trying to get Hutch and silence Hutch. And uh, so then it's the battle between the boss, this boss guy and Hutch. And it's great. There's a scene that reminds me, like if you were to take like John Wick and you were to add Home Alone and you were to add like MacGyver, because there's this scene where he's like, he knows he's like bringing the bad guys to him. And he sets up the the place that he works that he just bought for some I don't know what like that whole part of this movie there's like this storyline that that runs through where he wants to buy the business from his his uh stepfather or his uh father in law and um of course they're like oh, you gotta you you gotta give me a lot of money if you want this beauty and it, and he just wants something that's his own like that's the whole reason he wants the business but. I don't know. Anyway, he sets up like all these booby traps and things that are just beautiful. It's just like what I love in a movie is when they're able to do something new and inventive and not just the same thing. Like John Wick brings a level of sophistication to gunplay and weapon play that most action movies don't do. It it gives like a grounded reality to the action scenes and the fight scenes that most most action movies are just, you know, big explosions and, like, just ridiculous cookie-cutter stuff that every action movie does. And when they're able to just twitch, twist it and, and also have, like, this, this bigger backstory that you see is there, but you, you're not really given all the information on it. Right, like you know, John Wick was part of some big organization and whatever, and you, and throughout the franchise, you you get to explore more of that world. Uh, uh, similarly, this movie is 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 same, same, same. Uh, that there is like this bigger world, still kind of more grounded in this reality where John Wick is a little bit more comic booky, uh, re- like an alternate reality John Wick, uh, but this one is still super great it also has christopher lloyd that plays his dad which is amazing and you got rizza playing his uh i would imagine they i would imagine they don't outright say it but i think rizza and him were both adopted by uh christopher lloyd so i think christopher lloyd is like their foster father or their adopted father it could be that maybe Rizza's the adopted son and Hutch is the biological. They never really go into it, but it's that type of family dynamic where they're all like assassin type guys, which I love. I love. I mean, Rizza, you only hear his voice up until the end of the movie. Uh, towards the end, there's like a big end battle, which is amazing. Um, but yeah, great slow motion action scenes set to like crooners like 50s and 60s just like nightclub crooners like uh like old blue eyes and I, like i don't even know the soundtrack was great and it, it i mean it's music that you would think uh hutch would listen to relaxing at night with a, a glass of scotch but it's these slow motion action scenes that it, it it's a great it's a perfect contrast in the brutality that's happening on screen and just like the, the smooth, uh, succulent voices of all these crooners uh, was, was uh, a lot of fun. Uh, but yeah, I enjoyed it. Uh, the one thing that's just a standard in action movies, that's, it's okay. I mean, it's even in John Wick. It's just it's something that I noticed specifically in this one, but I'm sure it happens in all movies that are similar in this in this genre is that like guns alcohol and violence fixes everything like obviously guns i mean we have a whole culture of people in the united states that think guns are the greatest things in sliced bread uh but like alcohol is like the cure-all medicine like if you're beat up like just drink a glass of like it, it helps with everything painkiller helps you anxiety depression it helps with everything uh and then obviously violence which you know action movie but i really enjoyed it i'm excited to see what this director does next it was a surprise a pleasant surprise to see it's the same director as the guy that did uh hardcore henry 
Like, it's nice to see a director willing to try new things. A director that realizes there are no rules. Like, changing how we do action movies is ultimately going to be a good thing. If you have an idea that's different from the norm, chances are it's going to be beneficial to the to the film, to the genre. You see it all the time. You see it all the time where a director does this new thing and then everybody like bullet time in the matrix. Like after the matrix came out, like every action film had a bullet time sequence. And that was like the Wachowskis trying something new. Not new, new. I mean, it's something that probably had been visualized before in, like, in anime or, you know, whatever. Like, there's probably been that type of thing. But bringing it to a live-action action film, uh, you know, that's, that's, the, that's the new. That's the rule-breaking, which I... I enjoyed. I enjoyed Bob Odenkirk as a badass. I enjoy seeing casting that wouldn't make sense on paper. That's not your stereotypical. It's not like John Cena. Like John Cena would not fit in this movie. It would fit if you once you realize that he's a badass, but you would never believe that he is the beta. Like Bob Odenkirk, you can believe as being the beta in the beginning of this film. So when he you realize that he is the alpha of all alphas, it is a much bigger surprise versus, you know, you got Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's like, no, I'm an accountant. I just do the numbers. Oh, yes, I do guns, too. Get into the chopper. Like, that's not surprising. But this, you know, great casting. I enjoyed it. Uh, and hopefully Bob Odenkirk stays alive for a lot longer. He needs to finish. I'm going to be a selfish person right now. And your life, Bob Odenkirk. Better be devoted to finishing Better Call Saul. And then a bunch of other stuff. I would love to see a follow-up to Nobody. Nobody again. More Nobody. Nobody 2. I'm in. I'm, I'm, whatever this... And hopefully it's the same director. Because I, I really enjoyed those action scenes. It's nice seeing different stuff. It's nice. It feels good watching something new. Something inventive. Something creative. It, it's just, it, it makes me happy. And uh, I enjoyed this movie. Uh, and I recommend it if you're a John Wick fan. It's like a no-brainer. If you like that kind of action movie that John Wick has, it's, it's, it's similar in so many ways, but also its own thing. in every it, Like, all the ways that it's similar to John Wick, it does in a different way, which makes it, it, like, ma it, makes it stand out as its own thing, which I enjoyed. I appreciate. Uh, and the moment... <laughs> The moment where, because there's a scene where, like, he, like he, you know, he's battling with this this evil boss guy, and the evil boss guy sends a bunch of like his private military to Hutch's house, which is against the rules. In like this world of assassins and and bad guys, don't send people to the house. He sends people to the house. Of course, Hutch prepared the basement. His, his man cave, highly prepared for what happens. But there's a scene, like he, it's like his, he, where he puts his, his family into the safe room, the basement, and he takes care of the bad guys. And there's a scene where, and then I think he leaves and, and he comes back because his parents, he just like tells his kids, his family, stay in there. Stay in the safe room until I come and get you. And he goes and does a bunch of stuff before he comes and gets them. But when he gets them, like, he's walking them out of the carnage that is everywhere inside of his home. Dead bodies everywhere. And it's the scene where it's like, you realize, I mean, the wife, you, under, you, you come to find out she knew his past to a level. I don't know how much of his past she knew. But his kid, who thought he was, like, the beta dad, worthless he looks up to his uncle as being this badass alpha dude. Uh, mind blown, I'm sure. Mind blown. It was almost a comedic moment. Uh, although they didn't really play it as much to, to show the son's reaction to seeing all the carnage. But you know. 
you know in the reality of this movie that that kid was like, oh, I complete, how did I not know my dad could do this shit? I enjoyed this movie quite a bit. Uh, so check it out when you get a chance. Nobody. Everybody. Check out Nobody. Everybody check out the movie Nobody. It's called Nobody, but everybody should check out Nobody. Nobody should miss Nobody. Everybody should watch Nobody, but nobody should miss Nobody because Nobody's a good movie that everybody should see Nobody, but nobody should miss Nobody because Nobody's a good movie, but everybody should see Nobody. Everybody just see Nobody, and you'll be okay because you will have seen Nobody if everybody sees it. That's my final word. Get yourself some amazing coffee over at stationhousecoffee.com and follow Station House Coffee on Instagram. That's your place for small batch, single origin, premium coffee brewed in Thetford Center, Vermont, shipped directly to you. Go now to stationhousecoffee.com and order yourself some amazing coffee. And don't forget to follow Station House Coffee. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on IGTV, YouTube, and everywhere else podcasts are found. Binge the full week ad free over at patreon.com slash inspired disorder. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at inspireddisorder.com. Follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful week, everybody. Peace. Ah! Oh,